Welcome to Calculus Explained, finally. Today we are going to discuss derivatives and a few of the ways you, that you can find the first derivative of the function f of x. But first we need to discuss the concept of a tangent line. Taking the derivative of a function is equivalent to finding the slope of a tangent line. And knowing how to find the slope is crucial. The equation of any line is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope. If you are given a point that has no slope, you can find the slope using the formula y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. To find the slope, you may also use the equation shown in this picture, m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And now on to derivatives. This is a picture of all the equations to find the derivative of the function. Fi only the left column is important, and if you are having trouble viewing this, you may try to maximize your screen. There are a couple of basic rules we need to cover before diving into the really tricky stuff. The derivative of x to the first power is always 1, and if there is a leading coefficient before x, then you multiply that number times 1. The derivative of x to the 0 power, or n to the 0 power, is 0. n to the first power is also 0. To find the derivative of x to the n power, put n in front of x and subtract n minus 1 as the exponent. Those are the basic rules you'll need to know before you can take the next step, which is the product rule. You will use the product rule when you have two functions multiplied to each other. By looking at the formula given, h of x equals f of x times g of x, you will note that the two, equi the two functions are being multiplied to each other. So, to begin, you will take the derivative of the first equation, f of x, then multiply by the second equation's original. Then you will add the derivative of g of x times the original of f of x. This is very important rule because it is used a lot, especially when using the chain rule or taking functions to the second derivative. And now on to the quotient rule, and my buddy Professor Sprout is here to show us what to do. If you look at the board behind him, he has written up the equation the f of x divided by g of x. So the two functions are being divided by each other. So to find the derivative of this function, you must first take the derivative of f of x times the original g of x, then subtract the derivative of g of x, and multiply it by the original f of x. Now this whole one equation subtracted by the other equation is the numerator, and then you will divide the numerator by g of x squared. And now Professor Sprout is back to teach us about the chain rule. The chain rule is used when you have a function that is all multiplied by the same power, whether what is inside the parentheses is being added or subtracted, it doesn't matter. This is all to the same power. So you begin by taking the power of the equation and putting it in the front of the parentheses like you would for any other derivative. And then the, the exponent is now subtracted by 1. So if you take this example of x squared plus 1 to the third power, you must first bring the 3 in front of the function, as you would with any other function, and subtract the exponent by 1. The trick here is you are left with 3x squared plus 1 to the, the second power, but you have to multiply the equation by the derivative of what is inside, which is 2x, because the derivative of 1 is 0. So now, the derivative of f of x equals 3, parentheses, x squared plus 1, close parentheses, to the second power, 
times 2x. So you are left with 6x in parentheses x squared plus 1 close parentheses to the second power and that is your answer. Now here is a cartoon to, to further explain the chain rule. You must take the derivative of the mother equation and leave the baby inside of that equation. So you leave the baby inside the parentheses. Then you take the derivative of the baby function, so what is inside the parentheses, and multiply it by the mother equation. And that is all you need to know to find the basic functions of differentiation. Next week, we will learn how to apply these rules to trigonomic functions, and I know everyone is just waiting with bated breath.